see, and then you still can see it. Okay, I want to say today's lab, uh, today's lecture is important because we're going to go over lots of information regarding the uh, staining technology. So first of all, we're going to finish talk about the microscope. First of all, is fluorescence microscope. Now you need to know what means fluorescence. This is a color. This color kind of is light, light yellow, with a little bit of shining. Uh, fluorescence, some of the bacteria naturally has fluorescence. Let's say Pseudomonas fluorescence. Say so naturally the bacteria has those light yellow shining color. If you buy a diamond, when you pick a diamond, you know you don't want a fluorescence here because it's not means it's very purity. If you have experiences be before, I bet you probably not. So if you buy a diamond, you don't want a fluorescence here. But for bacteria, we want it because it's we can see it. Okay. Now, fluorescence microscope. There is several difference between what we talk about the light field microscope. First of all, this energy resource is different. The energy resource of a fluorescence microscope is not light; it is UV light or blue light. This is the same first difference, the energy difference. Second, these type of micros this type of microscope when we use this specimen has to stay differently. This is the dye what we're using for fluorescence microscope. And I tell you what see most of them, they stain DNA, not stain the whole cell. Why? Because once they stain the DNA, you will differentiate a dead cell and a live cell. A dead cell, most of the time, it is red. I don't have red one, I only have pink, so it's red. A live cell sometimes is green. And you can do that. So that's why they stain DNA. Here you listed, the table 2.3, you listed so many uh, fluorochromos. Most widely used is the second one, called the Debbie stain. D-A-B-P-I, Debbie stain. This is the most widely used in the lab. Okay, so once you stain it, then you put in the fluorescence microscope. What you're going to see is a picture right here. There is also a block, but this block is a mirror. So see the very simple. The short wavelength light will be absorbed, and the longer wavelength lights will be passing through it. Then you will be sure the difference. But how do we know which one is short, which one is long? This has to set up through the computer system before we do anything. Because the dye have a wavelength for red and the green. If I still remember, this red one might be 500-ish nanometer. This green one, kind of like a 625 nanometer. You have to set the wavelength of the computer, because uh, of the system, sorry. Then they will be showing you the red and dye. Okay, so that's a major thing for the fluorescence microscope. You can see what the results looks like. This is a typical, you can see the red cell is dead and the brightening, uh, brightening, the shining green cell, which is, means they are alive. And this is a streptococcus, a chain. And this is some eukaryotes. It's completely blue. Okay? So that's something for fluorescence microscope. A little bit easier. Next one, laser confocal microscope. This one I used in my research a long time ago. So we say laser confocal microscope. Okay, what is the difference between this one to the other? First of all, this 
microscope is very expensive. You need a special funding from NSF or USDA to purchase it. The one facility might be somewhere, somewhere like this, to have your soil. Maybe you get a cheaper one, at least a hundred thousand. Because the energy resource is laser, we call it argon laser. Most of them coming from a co company called Zest. And I will show you the company's name, I mean, right here. Z-E-I-S-S, microimaging company. That's a company who supplied these microscopes. Okay, so the argon laser. Now, this is a good advantage of these type of microscope. You will see 3D images. And this has to be connected to computer. Now, why this is important to see the 3D images? Because these type of microscope are major using for a one very special bacteria called a biofilm. Now, what is biofilm? Is a matrix of bacteria stacking together and they are communicating with each other through so called chlorine sensing which is a chemical signal specific by themselves. Usually these bacteria in a poor nutrition condition and they will have a layer. So you will see on all kinds of surfaces those bacteria will be stacked together like this. And it is a big concern in the food industry, in meat industry, in the food processing facility. The bad thing, why will it happen? Because of the poor SSOP, sanitation standard operation procedure. Poor sanitation. You need to clean very well for daily uh, sanitation. Bacteria start to accumulate. The second you need to clean very well. The third you didn't clean very well started to accumulate, like a film, kind of like a film is formed. Those bacteria, we can say very poor nutrition uh, cultivated, they feel the form, have a film there, m more and more accumulated, they will become resistant to sanitizer. And I give you an example. If the bacteria growing in a broth, we will do this in the lab all the time. This is bacteria in broth, we call veg turkey cell. This is a biofilm. How many higher amounts of the chlorine solution we will using to do the sanitizing of the biofilm is almost 500. The ratio is one to 500, theoretically, okay? So that's why I tell you, it's a big, it, it, it's a big uh, risk and a big challenge in the meat industry. Because more or less, you have some residual bacteria on the surface. It's very difficult to remove it. The only one what you can do is a sanitizer with a very intensive physical removing. And also sometimes you need to use a different sanitizer because sometimes bacteria become more resistant. If you keep using one, so you have to use two to do the uh, rotation. Now, we using this laser convocal microscope. We will see the 3D images of this layer. Then, you could get an idea what the morphology of this biofilm uh, looks like. And it gave you some of the basic science behind it. Okay, so that's why this is one of the good things for convocal microscope. This is what the research what I did a long time ago with USDA Agricultural Research Service at Maryland 10 years ago when I was a postdoc there. And uh, I didn't do the 3D, 3D images, but I can just show, show you something there. This 
A, which is a normal bacteria, which is like a control. And we stand with David for DNA. We're using this, this guy. And this is the color spectrum. Right side X axis is green color. The Y axis is like red. So you see most of them are green, which means the control, lots of them are still survive, a lot of them are survive. So the color spectrum mutation is on the right side. This is the one we sanitize the biofilm surface used just to water. And you will see some of them are died, but lots of them still survive. Therefore, the color spectrum meter is most of them on the right side, a little bit on the middle. This is the one we use in chlorine. And you can see the red color start to show up, and then the green one start to decrease because some of them are died. And the last one is we using chlorine, we also using a surfactants to assist the chlorine to cure the mobile film. Then what you show, most of them are purple color, which indicates those biofilm are injured. Okay, so just give you an example. This can do a 3D images, also can be connected to the color <coughs> spectrometer. Spectrum. Uh, and this is the one, X and the Y, this is for the green, and this is for the red, and then in the middle, it is usually purple. This is for live cell, red for dead cell, and the purple is usually for injured cell. Okay, so that's something else. We could be using the purple laser uh, scanning microscope to do the observation. Okay, when we talk about finish, talk about this. We will talk about the snare preparation and we will introduce you detail, all the staining technology. Uh, some of them we will do in the lab, some of them are not. These slides I will go over real quick, because we're going to practice in the lab real quick, and some of you already did. This is called smear preparation. How you make a smear before you use a microscope. So the first one, you add a glass slides, you have to label. Then you add a drop of the water. And then you make a smear that's going to be thin. Then you follow the by air drop, three to five minutes, and then we do a heat fixing. Now, unfortunately, in the first lab, we don't have a gas, so we skip it. <coughs> the heat fixing is trying to cooling all the enzymes of the bacteria. So the bacteria will not be survived and it will be stick onto the glass slide surface. And then we added that. We had the crystal violates, saffronine, carbon fusion, different type of the dye. And then we uh, let it be steady for 60 seconds, about a minute. Then we dry, we rinse it, and we use a microscope to do the observation. And we can see a morphology and arrangement of the bacteria cell. So this is smear preparation. We will talk more detail in the lab at the practice. So here we want to talk a little bit of principles behind these simple stain. So when we do the simple stain, we already talk about if a bacteria normally grow at a 37 degrees Celsius, 24 hour, it will be right here is negatively charged. That's negative charge. Then you have two different types of the dye. Some of the dye, we call it basic dye. What are the examples of basic dye? Crystal violet, which is purple color, saffronine, pink color, and the messing blue, which is blue color, and the carbon fusion, which is also pink color. These are the basic dye. These dye are positively charged. You know positive and negative charge they can combine together, therefore they stain the bacteria. However, sometimes we do not want to stain the bacteria. We want to stain the background. Therefore, it's come up with another group of the dye 
We call it acid dye. So the acid dye, which is thin, vagrounded. Because it is also, okay, let's say the bacteria is negatively charged. This acid dye is also negatively charged. So they are actually staying in the background. What are the examples? In the ink and nigrophy. Those are the two examples. Okay? That's called a negative stain. A rose, bagel, all those other things um, they use. So these are the major difference between these two. Now, what are the results we can do after simple stain? This is talks about basic dye have positive charge, acid dye have a negative charge. I will say we want to see the cell morphology, which means shape of the cell and the cell arrangement. We have another slide at the end of the lecture will tell you. Cell morphology, which means it's cock cell, large cell arrangement, it could be single, it could be different cock cell, it could be uh, tetrase, it could be a grape shape, or a chain. Because those are characteristics for a certain bacteria, especially for pathogen. So look at here, this is crystal violet, stained E. coli, you will see it's a single lot. Corner bacteria, do you know corner bacteria dipsaria, which is called in the dipsaria lymph, swearing lymph nodes, and it has a tonsil area with soft uh, cedar membrane there. You use the messing blue, you see it's a club shape. Okay? So that's, if you see those things under this microscope, which is a sample from the patients, which is giving you an initial idea what it looks like, a bacteria. Okay, negative stain. This is a good example for a negative stain. Okay, how to do a negative stain? We're not going to do it in the lab, but we will just show you. Negative stain, you need a two glass slides. This is a glass slide, we do a smear preparation. When we do the smear preparation, we're going to add a dye, which is in the end, or nigrosy. And then you need another glass slide right there. A very gentle repel from left to the right, right. Like you did for your blood cell, then it will be covered, the whole thing. And at the end of you doing the staining, it will show up. The background and the <laughs> is dark, and the bacteria is showed up. So here you will see this. And I mentioned that I have a very <coughs> What this looks like? This is the one we call it a capsule, which is a heavy polysaccharide. And the inside is a bacteria cell. What does this look like? We call it a lancet shape. And we saw it's different cock cell. This is a typical streptococcus ammonia cause community acquired ammonia, okay? And then, they did not stain this one, they stained the background. So, when you see this negative stain, we also call this is capsule stain. Okay, so that's an example of negative stain, we do the capsule stain. Uh, differentiation stain. <coughs> we will be talk detail. Gram stain. Acid faster stain. Uh, I would not say acid faster stain is a differentiation stain. And uh, I would say gram stain is a typical differentiation stain. I will explain the reason to you. And then also we're going to talk about some special stain, which is in those four flagella and the capsule stain. We already mentioned the capsule stain briefly. So we'll talk about those one by one. First of all, grand stain. I want to spend a lot of time talking about this. And uh, we're also going to practice in the lab at least three times.
times uh, in, a row, in, the, in, the, in the semester. Okay, so we want to talk about Gramsci. And the story behind that, and I hope everybody will be know about this. Okay, Gramsci. First of all, you need to know, Gramsci created the Bible. Hesse Christo Gram, a Danish scientist. Back in around the 90, uh, maybe 90s, uh, like 80, 90, some year around that. The time he tried to see a passage called Calabasa Ammonia. And he using this technology. And uh, it's a very magic one. Until uh, today, we widely use it. What this one tells us? Gramstein, basically, we talk about the bacteria. Using Gramstein, we could differentiate the bacteria into two major groups, which is Gram positive and the Gram negative. I mean, you know that, I and mean, you heard about it. Gram positive bacteria, it stains a purple. Some of the textbook said blue. Granative, it stands red. Some of the textbook said pink. This is for bacteria. Okay, later on, people do some of the research for eastern modes, which means fungi. Fungi, we always say, gram stain. Group. So this is the basic information you need to know before we talk about anything. Okay, number three. What are the major steps of Gramstein? Which is right there. We will practice in the lab again and again. The basic thing is make a smear that like we did before, like the simple step. But the major steps of these Four steps or number one is crystal violence. Number two is grand iodine. Number three is we adding ninety-five percent alcohol. Number four is we add a sulfur. Now what are the function of these four procedures? <coughs> Number one, crystal violet. This is a basic dye, I will say. You're gonna put the color there. So you put purple color. What's the function of gram ida? The function of gram ida, we call it some more band, which make crystal violet stay strong. Okay, what are the third step? 95 degree, 95 percent alcohol. This is we call decoloration. We try to remove those two. Okay, hopefully it's like black and nothing there. So what is the last step of Saffroni? Counter stain. Okay, so here are the things you need to know. Grand positive bacteria, stay purple or we say stay blue. This is actually, is a crystal Violet color. And the gram negative bacteria, which is red and the pink, this is actually is saffronin color. Because saffronin is pink to red. Okay? 
That's the story behind them. Now, the major story. Why Graham stain positive? Stains blue, purple or blue? Why Graham stain negative stains red or pink? We're going to talk about a little bit of mechanism behind that. There are two series to talk about this. Number one, cell wall series. Okay, what are going to be the cell wall theory of gram-positive bacteria? You may learn about already in Biology 101. We want to give you a review, okay? This is gram-positive bacteria. And this is a gram-negative bacteria. What's the difference? Inside of the cell, you have this heavy cell membrane system. What this looks like? What are these? Cell membrane. Okay, what's the name for this? Fluid mosaic model. Do you still remember biology 101? Okay. What are these? Yeah, phosphor lipids. Okay. What is this? Hydro. Phobic? Is that right? Yeah. What's this? Hydrophilic. Okay, good. Like water or dislike water? Okay, we'll talk about that later on. Protein, right here. This is a movement. Like, you know, they are moving and they try to make sure it is balanced. Of, okay, lots of function for these proteins, like transfer energy, transfer nutrients, support. Or and then like transfer material, I mean, lots of functions. These are the same, no difference. The major difference is up here. For gram positive bacteria, there is a very much heavy layer right here. What's the name for this? Peptidoglycan. For gram-positive bacteria, this is very thick. For gram-negative bacteria, in other words, this is very thin. Okay? Okay, above gram-positive bacteria, you may have something like this. Some people say, and then you have a little bit right here. This is what we call like a tachoic Taconic acids. <coughs> okay, for gram-negative bacteria, you will 